In this module, I will discuss stresses in detail. First, I will discuss stresses on a surface and then stresses at a point. To understand stresses on a surface, consider a component which is subjected to general loading as shown. Due to this loadings, an internal resisting force will be set up in this body. To understand this internal resisting force, make an imaginary cut in the body by this red plane that divides the body in two parts A and B. Since this entire body is in equilibrium, therefore the part A of the body must also be in equilibrium. To maintain the equilibrium of part A, an internal resisting force F must be acting on this red cross section as shown. To analyze this internal resisting force F, we establish a coordinate system on the cross section as shown having three mutually perpendicular direction. The one which is perpendicular to the cross section is nth and the other two th and sh are along the cross section. With respect to this coordinate system, the internal resisting force F can be resolved in three components. The component of internal resisting force F along the nth axis is Fn, that is along this axis the component of internal resisting force is Fn. Along the th axis is Ft, that is along this axis it is Ft. And along sth direction the component of internal resisting force F is Fs. It can clearly be seen that the internal resisting force Fn is perpendicular to the red cross section and Ft and Fs are acting along the cross section that is they are shear components. To calculate stresses on this red imaginary surface we divide the internal resisting force F by the cross sectional area of this red imaginary plane. The normal stress on the red imaginary surface can be written as the internal resisting force which is perpendicular to the cross section that is Fn divided by the area of cross section and the shear component along sth direction can be written as the shear component of internal resisting force Fs along sth direction divided by area and the shear stress along th direction can be written as the internal resisting force along th direction that is Ft divided by the area of this red imaginary surface. On a surface we have three component of stresses one which is normal to the cross section that is sigma n and the other two which are the shear component that is tau along sth and tau along th direction. The next topic is stresses at a point. To understand stresses at a point, consider some general point A in the body. At this point A, to specify the stresses, we need three quantities. The first quantity is the surface passing through this point on which stresses are to be specified. That is, at this point A, we want to specify the stresses on the vertical plane or the horizontal plane or this plane or this plane. Suppose we want to specify the stresses on this plane. Then we have to identify this plane. That is, we have to specify the orientation of this plane. A plane is named with respect to its outward normal. If the outward normal of the plane is in nth direction, then that plane is called as nth plane. Consider this surface. Suppose this is the nth direction. Now if we consider surface AB, then it has two normals, one which is inward and the one that is outward. To name surface AB, we have to look for its outward normal. The outward normal of this surface AB is in nth direction. Therefore, we call surface AB as nth surface. I will give more examples. Consider this cube. On this cube, we have six surfaces. 
let us establish the coordinate system this is x direction this is y direction and this is z direction which is perpendicular to this plane if we look at the surface a b c d then its outward normal is in x direction therefore we call surface a b c d as xth surface Now if we look at the surface B E F C then its outward normal is in yth direction therefore we call this surface as yth surface if we look at the surface A B E G then its outward normal is in zth direction therefore we call this surface A B E G as zth surface also if you look at the surface g e f h then its outward normal is in minus x direction then also we call this surface as xth surface similarly if we look at the surface a d h g then its outward normal is in minus y direction then also we call this surface as yth surface therefore a surface is is named after its outward normal the second quantity to specify is the orientation of the stress with respect to this surface that is the stress with respect to the chosen surface is a normal stress or a shear stress suppose we have chosen this surface a b c d then with respect to this surface the stress we are talking about is a normal stress or a shear stress and if it is shear then in which direction it is it is in tth direction or it is in sth direction the third quantity to specify is the magnitude of the stress to specify stresses at a point we use stress notation the stress notation symbol contains two subscripts the first subscript specifies the surface on which stress is to be written that is we want to specify on xth plane or on yth plane or on zth plane or on any nth plane the second subscript specifies the orientation of the stress with respect to the chosen surface that is the stress is the normal stress or the shear stress therefore when i write sigma n at it means that the stress is acting on the nth plane in nth direction this red cross section is named as nth plane because its outward normal is in nth direction on this nth plane the stress component which is acting in nth direction is sigma n n this component as it can be seen is normal to the cross section therefore we call sigma nn as the normal stress similarly tau nt means that stress is acting on the nth plane in tth direction on this nth plane the stress component which is acting along the tth direction is clearly along the cross section therefore it is the shear component tau ns is the stress acting on this nth surface this also is the shear stress to conclude on a surface three component of stresses can be specified for example on nth surface we can specify three component of stresses as sigma nn tau nt and tau ns that is one normal and to shear now at a point there can be three independent surfaces for example at this point there can be three independent surfaces first this second this third this now on each surface you need to specify three component of stresses three on this surface three on this surface and three on this surface so total nine components of stresses are to be written to specify stress at a point let's take an example suppose 
the three independent planes taken at a point are the x th plane y th plane and z th plane this is the x th plane this is y th plane and this is the z th plane because their outward normals are in x z direction y th direction and z th direction respectively assuming that the coordinate system here is like this the stresses on the x th plane can be written as sigma xx tau xy tau xz one normal and two shear so this is the excess surface on this excess surface one normal component sigma xx one shear component that is tau xy that is shear stress on the x th plane in y th direction this is x direction and this is y th this is z th similarly tau xz means the stress is on the x th plane that is on plane a b c d and on the x th plane it is in z th direction that is this direction this therefore can be written as tau xz similarly the stresses on y th plane at this point can be written as one normal sigma yy and the two shear this is the y th plane e f g h the normal component is sigma yy that is stress on the y th plane in y th direction similarly tau yx can be written as the stresses on the y th plane in x th direction tau yx similarly tau yz can be written as the stresses on the y th plane in z th direction so this is so e f g h is the y th plane and stress in the z th direction is tau y z similarly the stresses on the z th plane are one normal and two shear this i j k l is the z th plane because its outward normal is in z th direction the normal component on this z th plane is z th plane in z th direction and the other one is the stress on the z th plane in x th direction which is the shear because it is acting along the plane i j k l the third stress is tau z y which is acting on z th plane in y th direction tau z y is the shear stress because it is acting along the plane i j k l therefore at any point if we want to specify the stresses we have to choose three perpendicular planes and specify the stresses on these three perpendicular planes therefore at a point there are nine components of stresses these nine components of stresses can be written in a matrix this matrix is called as stress matrix the stress matrix looks like this in the first row the stresses on x th plane are written in the second row the stresses on y th plane are written in the third row stresses on z th plane are written the diagonal of this stress matrix contains the normal component of stresses at a point and if we are writing tau xy here we have to write tau yx here if we are writing tau xz here we have to write tau zx here if we are writing tau yz here we have to write tau zy here these nine components of stress at a point can also be visualized by drawing stress element the stress element is an imaginary object that help us to visualize stress at a point take an example of stress element in cartesian coordinates the stress element in cartesian coordinates is a cube to understand this consider a bar which is subjected to some general loading this bar is subjected to some gen general loading here the load acting is p1 p2 p3 some p4 and under this loading this bar is in equilibrium i want to write stresses at some general point a at this point to visualize these stresses we have to draw stress element in cartesian coordinates the stress element is a cube that can be drawn like this the stress element has six plane 
वन एक्सेथ एंड इस काउंटर माइनस एक्सेथ वन इन वाई डायरेक्शन एंड इस काउंटर इन वाई वन इन माइनस जेड एंड दी अदर इन जेड स्ट्रेसिस कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड ऑन दिस स्ट्रेस एलिमेंट फर्स्ट रिप्रेजेंट स्ट्रेसिस ऑन दी एक्सेथ प्लेन ऑन दी एक्सेथ प्लेन देर विल बी थ्री कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ स्ट्रेसिस वन नॉर्मल एंड टू शेयर वन नॉर्मल एंड टू शेयर दिस स्ट्रेस एलिमेंट इज ए पार्ट ऑफ द बार and the bar is in equilibrium therefore the part of the bar that is this q must also be in equilibrium to maintain the equilibrium if stresses are acting on one surface then they must be balanced by the stresses on the other surface the sigma xx is balanced by this sigma xx tau xy is balanced by tau xy tau xz is balanced by tau xz now represent stresses on yth surface and to balance these stresses we represent stresses on its counter surface similarly we can represent stresses on zs surface and on its counter surface the stresses at a point can be visualized by drawing a stress element that shows the complete state of stresses at a point the next concept is regarding plane stress if stress components in one of the direction vanishes that is they do not exist we call this state of stress as a plane state of stress this plane stress is a assumption that we take to simplify the stress analysis under some cases for example as in the case of thin cylinders that we will see later at a point there are nine component of stresses now if we can assume that the state of stresses at a point is a plane stress then the components in one of the direction will vanish and this will reduce the number of stresses that we have to analyze therefore the stress matrix of plane stress looks like this which has only components in x and y direction all the component of stresses in one of the direction let us say z direction are not appearing that is tau xz is 0 similarly tau yz is 0 similarly tau zx is 0 tau zy is 0 and sigma zz is also 0 the only component that are appearing are these components let's have a look at the stress element for plane stress we have already learned that stress element in cartesian coordinates is a cube but under plane stress the stresses acting on this cube at some point a are only sigma xx tau xy similarly on its counterpart sigma yy and tau yx similarly on its counterpart there are no component of stresses in z -th direction this cube can now be reduced to a box on which stresses can be shown as sigma xx tau xy sigma yy tau yx sigma xx tau xy sigma yy and tau yx so when we are analyzing plane state of stress then to visualize state of stress as some point a the stress element that we have to choose is a simple box on which the stresses sigma x sigma y tau xy and tau yz can be shown like this The next topic is about conjugate shear stresses. Shear stresses tau xy and tau yx are called as conjugate shear stresses. Similarly, tau yz and tau zy are called as conjugate shear stresses and tau zx and xz are called conjugate shear stresses. At any point, shear stresses always occur in conjugate pair. This is required to maintain equilibrium at this point. Consider a uh, point A under plane state of stress suppose the only shear stress acting at this point A is tau xy under this condition the box stress element is not in equilibrium 
as it can be seen that this tau xy and this tau xy will give a couple at point A like this. Similarly, if at the point A only tau yx is acting, then this tau yx and this tau yx will give couple at about point A which will rotate the body in this direction. Therefore, to maintain the equilibrium at this point A on the stress element, if tau xy is acting, then tau yx must also act to maintain the equilibrium. Now this point A is in equilibrium because the moment given by this tau xy is cancelled by the moment given by this tau yx. Therefore, shear stresses always occurs in conjugate pair that is if tau xy exists then tau yx also must exist to maintain equilibrium. It can also be proved that conjugate shear stresses at a point are equal. This can be proved by moment balance. To understand moment balance at a point, consider this stress element in three dimension. Consider moment about z axis. Suppose this is the z axis. This is x axis, this is y axis and z axis is perpendicular to this plane. At a point there are 9 components of stresses and another 9 on their counterpart planes to maintain balance on this stress element. The stresses on x plane are sigma xx and the other two are shear tau xy and tau xz. This sigma xs is passing through the axis z therefore the sigma xx will not give any moment about z axis. Similarly this component tau xz is parallel to the z axis therefore tau xz will also not give any moment about z axis. So out of these three components only tau xy will give moment about z axis. On the counterpart plane again sigma xx is passing through the z axis tau xz is anti parallel to the z axis therefore this also will not give any moment therefore only tau xy will give moment about z axis. Now consider stresses on y -th surface again sigma yy is passing through z axis it will not give any moment tau yz is parallel to z axis it will also not give any moment the only component that will give moment is tau yx. On this counterpart plane again sigma yy is passing through z axis and tau yz is anti parallel to the z axis. So the only component that will give moment is tau yz. Tau xy. Tau yx. These components only will give moment about z axis. Now let us take moment about z axis. Let this length be dx and this length be dy. We want to take moment at point A about z axis. Recall that the moment of a force is the force into perpendicular distance. Remember that this is a stress so we have to convert this into force. So force is equal to stress into area. For example tau xy is the stress and the area on which it is acting is dz into dy. So the moment of this force about this axis is given by the force into perpendicular distance from z axis which is this. This distance can be written as dx by 2. Similarly the moment of this stress tau yx can be written as tau xy into area which is dy into dz. 
into perpendicular distance from the axis which is this distance this is dx by 2 if this is z axis and this is tau xy then this tau xy is trying to rotate the element in anti clockwise direction about z axis and this tau xy is trying to rotate the element in anti clockwise direction about z axis therefore we take the moment of this force which is in anti clockwise direction is taken as positive and the moment of this force also in is in anti clockwise direction therefore it is taken as positive so both the moments are taken as positive now if we look at the moment of tau yx this is tau yx this a length is dx and this length is dz therefore the force acting is tau yx into area which is dx dz into dx and the perpendicular distance of this force from z axis is this this distance is the half of dy so into dy by 2 similarly the moment of the force tau y x can be written as about z axis can be written as tau y x into area area is dx into d z into perpendicular distance of this force from the z axis which is dy by 2 now if we look at this forces this is tau y x and this is tau y x this force is trying to rotate the body in clockwise direction about z axis and this force also is trying to rotate the body in clockwise direction about z axis so we take the moments of tau y x about z axis as negative at this point a the moments of tau xy and tau yx moment of tau xy are tau xy into dy into dz into dx by 2 plus tau xy into dy into dz into dx by 2 and the moment of tau yx can be written as since it was negative therefore minus tau yx into dx dz into dy by 2 similarly for this can be written as minus tau yx into dx into dz into dy by 2 this net moment at the point a about z axis must be zero because this element is under equilibrium therefore net moment must be zero now if we simplify this equation we will see that dx dy dz dx dy dz dx dy dz are common in every term we take them out and this 2 can also be taken out so we will get tau xy is equal to tau yx therefore the conjugate shear stresses at a point are equal as proved by balancing moment at point a about z axis similarly if we take moment about x axis and then we take moment about y axis we will get that tau y z is equal to tau z y and tau z x is equal to tau x z therefore conjugate shear stresses at a point are equal mm -hmm.